So we're going to be talking about digital imaging exposure. And if we remember from Greek myth, the story of King Midas, this myth has actually has a lot to tell us about our society and where we're at right now. So Midas um, was blessed by one of the gods with being given the ability to anything he touched would turn to gold, right? Anything that he touched would turn to gold. And so he, you know, of course, had this lavish palace. Everything that he touched was turned to gold. And he felt tremendously blessed by this gift, right? Until one day his daughter ran to, you know, receive uh, her father's blessing. He embraced her and his daughter turned to solid gold, right? So what he had was really a blessing and a curse. A lot of that same thing holds true for us here in this country today, right? There's a lot of parts of our life. There's both a blessing and a curse. There's a blessing and a curse to the automobile, right? And we can all think about what those types of things are. Um, for us in digital imaging, there's a blessing and a curse to this system that we're using. So that's what I want to talk to us about today um, when we talk about these uh, units of measure and talk about exposure latitude. But not to put too fine a point on it, but here's a great example of how that blessing and a curse works for us. Um, I've repeated this experiment myself um, and it, it recently presented on it. It's remarkable. If you look at the top um, image, is showing us a series of x-rays taken on a film-based system, and the bottom is showing a series of x-rays taken on a digital imaging system. Clearly, from, on the film-based system, I can see, starting from the left, that the hand is underexposed. It appears kind of white. It has a lot of attenuation going on in it. As I progress through, the tech has bumped up the mass. And by, I get, by the time I get to image four, the hand is completely obliterated. It's burned out. The mass was too high. It's overexposed. That is a blessing and a curse in that if I overexposed that image or if I underexposed it, guess what? The tech had to go back up there, re-irradiate the patient, get a new picture for the doc to do their read. That you're burning more time. We're waiting on you know, results. All of that is a, is a problem, right? But the blessing in it that we didn't recognize during when we were working on film is that you can immediately see whether you're worth your salt as an x-ray tech. I can immediately say, if that was four different techs, which one's the good techs and which ones are the crappy techs, right? So it was, you, and you would hang this on a light, light board in your department for all to see, right? And it was there, like you knew immediately who knew what they were doing and who didn't. It was obvious. Now with digital, it's almost like one of those memes where you just see all the different faces of Harrison Ford. It's like Harrison Ford angry, Harrison Ford sad, Harrison Ford excited. It's just the same freaking facial expression, right? That's what we get with digital, right? Regardless if it's underexposed, optimally exposed, or overexposed, we get a beautiful picture, right? The blessing of that is that we can move forward with our jobs. We don't need to go back and re-irradiate the patient. We still have diagnostic information. We can move forward and get, um, go on to the next exam, make sure we treat this patient appropriately. The curse of that is that techs have figured out, oh my gosh, back in the day, if I overexposed it, I got crap. Now if I overexpose it, I get a beautiful picture. The only problem is, is if I underexpose it, it gets pixelated. So just irradiate them all and let God sort them out. Right? The way, the tell that's still there, we have to look for and we have to kind of be nerdy about it. Some of these clinical facilities are on top of this game, and a lot of, but a lot of them aren't, right, if we're honest. A lot of the techs you work with have no clue what an exposure indicator is. They just shoot it, they say, oh, that looks good, move on to the next patient. No clue whether they overexpose them or underexpose them or anything like that. The only way to make that determination in the days of digital is to look at an exposure index. Now, the unfortunate thing with this is these are confusing as hell. I don't know how else to put it. Um, so ideally what an exposure index refers to is the amount of exposure received by the image receptor, not by the patient. It's not a dose, but it's telling us how much exposure traveled through the patient, remnant beam strikes the image receptor, right? Knowing this gives me a ton of information. It tells me, was this technique appropriate? Is this a technique I could use on someone else? Was there an opportunity to reduce dose on this exam? All sorts of stuff. Um, and this is just an example of where that exposure indicated is buried. 
on, a, I think, an older Fuji system. Unfortunately, it gets confusing at this point. So that seemed like a nice thing. They gave us this exposure indicator. Thank you, nerds who write computer programmers. Now we can go and do our job, right? The problem is, is every single manufacturer out there, Siemens, Kodak, GE, um, Fuji, they all used different exposure indicators and they're all based on completely different maths. So it just made a complete muddle for technologists when this stuff first rolled out. Because if you're working on one room, for example, in the ED, at uh, one facility and they've got a Fuji machine in there and you go and you, sh you shoot an exam and the exposure indicator says this, you say that's good. You roll over to the department and you shoot a different exam on a Siemens exam. Guess what? You were looking at two completely different exposure indicators. One of them, the Fuji, as it got smaller, your exam was uh, getting more and more over -pen penetrated. The other one, the Siemens, as the number got larger, the exam was getting more and more over penetrated. So they're completely different scales. So there's been a call, a desperate call from physicists and x-ray techs for a long, long time, like literally like 20 years for us to get some standardization here, right? It's been a, it's been a problem for a long time. That's why the textbook wades into the weeds with context here. They want to tell us that it was significant when these uh, nerds at the International Electrotechnician Commission got together and published this nerdy report, right? It had something to do with patients and with our jobs, right? Um, this was picked up by the American Association of Physicists and Medicine, and they released their report titled An Exposure Indicator in Digital Radiography, and they wound on moving on towards creating this deviation index. So, the problem is, as I see as an x-ray tech, is the AAPM and the ASRT and the ARRT have zero conversation going on, right? Um, or very little. I'm sure there's a few trolls out there on YouTube that will pick up on this and be like, oh, there's a conversation going on, you're just not part of it because we hate you, right? Um, I, I do every now and then people troll my articles in the ASRT and every now and then I get these angry nerds who write me letters, you know, really hostily about the deviation index wasn't adopted by actually, it's like, okay, thank you. Like, there's not a conversation going on. Like, this is it. Your angry email, right? But the AAPM released report number 116 uh, detailing their way of creating an exposure indicator and that's what we're going to talk about right now. What that is and how to use it. Um, if you want to know what the vendor-specific exposure indices are, you just got to go to the vendor directly. Talk to the sales rep, talk to, um, look up the, uh, you know, read the instruction manual. Like, God forbid we read an instruction manual. So I didn't say that, don't hold me to that. But if, ha if you have to read a freaking instruction manual, it should be in there somewhere, right? What that vendor-specific exposure indicator is. I'm not going to talk about vendor-specific exposure indicators. Doctor, um, so and so yes. Little yes. Those indicators last year. Yes. The, the fellow that I unfortunately oh, fell asleep on while he was presenting was presenting on those two bullet points right there, oh. vendor specific <laughs> exposure indicators. <laughs> right? Is it valuable? Yes. You need to know it. It was really unfortunate that I hadn't slept the night before. <laughs> so to understand how to use this. Exposure indicator, the, st the standardized one. I don't mean to keep you in the in the dark about what it is. It's called the deviation index. You probably have some facilities that have adopted it. So this deviation index was what was come up with by the AAPM as a standardized way of reporting exposure indicator. And if I think it's a little dumbed down, I would like if it was something a little bit more detailed. But it is what it is. So if you want something detailed, you got to go back to the user manual and that specific vendor model, right, to figure out something detailed. If you want something a little dumbed down, the deviation index is for you. Because the deviation de index is taking a lot of different exposure values and just simplifying them as much as possible. The first exposure value it's going to play with, you should be familiar with air kerma, right, kinetic energy per unit mass of air, right? So it's looking at actual exposure or joules per kilogram gray, right? Um, that's the first one it's going to use. And pretty much everything is built off of the gray, right? So they have a standardized KERMA, right? And that's abbreviated as K standard or KSTD, right? Standard exposure typical of the imaging receptor system. So this is something that's established in a lab, 
right? They make, uh, they keep adding filtration, like in those experiments where we're doing half value layer, they keep making exposure, they figure out what is this system capable of responding to? Then there's the indicated equivalent uh, air kerma. This is a measurement of the radiation that actually hit the image receptor for a particular exposure. So the case standard was something that is set up in a lab. What can the system do? The indicated one is what actually hit the image receptor when I hit go on the machine, right? Uh, so there's different pixel values that are going to be processed for that, and they find some median value, right? They data correct, they figure out what is noise and what is actually an exposure, because that's what they're using that case standard to determine is how much of this is background radiation. Um, and, but the simplest way to talk about the K indicated is that it is um, the amount of exposure to the IR. You can call it the kind. Let's be nice and call it the kind. It's the amount of exposure at the IR. Then we have a target equivalent um, air kerma value. Uh, this is going to be something that represents an optimal exposure for each body part. So I'm doing a hand x-ray. What is optimal? That's our target, right? Anything more or less than that target is either under or overexposed. So that's the, the KTGT, the targeted air kerma. So they have a table, right, in the exam system that you're using. Say we're using a Siemens uh, system, we make an exposure. In that Siemens system, there is a library of values that say this is what was targeted for that hand x-ray. This is what the air kerma should be at the image receptor for that hand x-ray. This gives us the information that we need to calculate the deviation index. We're going to take what actually happened and figure out the difference between that and the target. Here's what the vendor says the target was for that hand x-ray. Here's what you shot, right? And between the two of them is the deviation index. How far did you deviate from the target is all this is saying. How far did your exposure deviate from the targeted exposure amount? Were you under the target or were you over the target in terms of exposure? So this, again, has nothing to do with positioning or anything like that. We're not talking about where you place the central ray or things like that. We're just talking about at the image receptor, what was the exposure at the image receptor? What was the expected exposure at the image receptor? So unfortunately, though, where you place the central ray does matter, right? If I didn't center appropriately, that value is going to be thrown off, right? And so there's a lot of variables that enter into this system at this point. So I cannot just blindly look at the deviation index and say, oh, that's overexposed, or oh, that's overexposed. If it wasn't centered appropriately, it will throw the deviation index off, right? So we need to evaluate the images and make sure that they are of sufficient quality. If you have any questions, talk to the radiologist, right? And it's, this is the interesting thing. I, at this point, I'm not saying talk to the radiologist because they know more about image contrast. Because the reality is, they don't. You know more about your machine than they do. Like, it would be a joke, right, to ask you to go in and interpret a PA hand x-ray. That would be a joke. <coughs> it would be a joke for a radiologist to ask me, hey, go interpret this PA hand x-ray for me. Just like it would be a joke if I said to the radiologist, hey, go shoot that PA hand x-ray for me, right? That would just, they'd be the same kind of mean joke. They cannot shoot the images. They don't really understand what it is we're doing when we position our patients. They do not understand all of these sticky wickets. The best of them do, right? Just like the best of the x-ray techs know a little bit about pathology, right? So we can have those conversations, but the reason I'm saying at this point, go talk to the radiologist, is because their monitor is better than yours. They have the better monitor. You don't really need them, you just need their freaking computer. Like, get out of the way, I need to see what this looks like on your screen, right? That's all we need from them. Um, does this look okay on your camera or on your display monitor, right? 
So I had, I've had a lot of good relationships with radiologists through the day, but one of the best ones that I've ever had was literally his reading room was backed up to the CR processing room. So it would pop up on the CR workstation. I'd say, oh, that looks like crap. I'd run around, pull up on his computer. He wouldn't even have to be there. I could just pull it up on his computer, see how it looked. Yeah, I need to repeat that, right? Um, so make sure that you are having those kind of critical conversations. We need to invite those more and more, especially as we get more and more um, digital. Because the technology just pushes us further and further apart. Like if we're honest, like going back to the King Midas story, we've got this beautiful system now of social media. And what has it caused, really? What has social media really given us? Just more opportunities for trolling, more opportunities for hackers, more opportunities for like political espionage. There's a lot of bad stuff that's come with it, right? And the reality is, it's like for all the social media and all of my friends on Facebook, some of those people I never even talked to, right? So has the technology become a wedge between us? I would say that between us and the, and the radiologists, the answer is a resounding yes. The technology has become a wedge between us, right? We're at a weird time where it's the best of times and worst of times, and the technology is actually creating more work for us, less critical conversations, things like that. I'm climbing down off my soapbox. Um, how do we use the deviation index then? Well, we can use it as a very simple measure of saying, do I need to adjust my technical factors? Did I give this sufficient juice to get a picture? Did I overexpose the patient? The deviation index tells me a simple yes or no. If the DI is negative, the image is underexposed. So if I get something from, uh, you know, like a negative, any negative value, it's underexposed. Um, to raise it by plus one, increase the technique by about 20%. Increase the mass, right? If the DI is positive, that's not a good thing. The image has been overexposed. There is too much exposure. We are over target. So we can decrease it by about 25%, again, the mass. Um, so each one of those plus or minus one values in the, in the deviation index uh, indicate an indicated air kerma difference of about 25 to 20%. Now, I've said that this system's not perfect, and if we want some really detailed information, we have to go back to the vendor-specific exposure index. The deviation index just gives us, like, underexposed, overexposed, or you're good, right? Um, there are things that can throw the deviation index off. I've already indicated that poor centering can throw the deviation index off. Presence of hardware or prosthesis can throw the deviation index off. If, for whatever reason, we've got to do a bilateral study and the patient's missing a portion of the anatomy, like they're missing a finger or something like that, it would throw the deviation index off, right? Gonadal shielding would throw the deviation index off. Um, with uh, Photostimulable phosphor systems, computer radiography systems, if it did not ex recognize the exposure field board borders, that would throw the deviation index off. Um, if the technologist that's holding the patient has a portion of their anatomy in the exam, which God forbid that happens, if that were the case though, or if a portion of the patient's anatomy was in the image receptor that was not to be studied, that would throw the deviation index off. So all sorts of stuff. As you're looking at the picture, you can't just critique it off the deviation index. You've got to apply all that you've learned from Tom's class in positioning and image production to that discussion, right? So any of that can cause it to fluctuate. What does that mean for us? Um, perhaps the best way to understand really whether we've got a picture is the presence of noise. The only way you're going to be able to see it, though, is, again, to occasionally borrow the, the um, radiologist monitor to see how noisy does it look as they're trying to interpret this, right? So what I'm saying is this is not a conversation for us to be having alone. At this point, I've established that we need physicists in the conversation. They've contributed their information. They've given us the deviation index. We need radiologists in the conversation. We need technologists in the conversation. If we're going to really get serious about improving patient quality, reducing patient dose in a digital world, we need to be talking more, not less, right? But what I see consistently is people talking less.
So I'm asking you all to go out and challenge some of those status quo things that are going on in your departments. As you go on to be registered technologists, hopefully you will kind of be standard bearers for, hey, we should be having this conversation right now, right? Because the culture that you're going to enter into is one where no conversation is going on, and that's a problem. That's the, uh, the blessing and the curse again. Now, the blessing, if, if I was to put, I've spent a lot of time talking about the blessing or the curse, but let's talk a little bit about the blessing of the system, right? And the best way to talk about it is talking about exposure latitude, right? Um, what does that mean? Latitude means how wide is the margin of error? The blessing of a digital system is the margin of error is huge, right? so big that if we're not careful, we are going to be replaced by chimpanzees or something. Like that's how big this margin of error is. Um, the margin of error is so significant that we could wind up working our way out of a job. So um, this latitude, right, refers to the range of exposures the image detector is able to detect, right? So this does depend on the image detector, but basically the higher the dynamic range of the detector, the more the values can be detected. So go back to that picture from early on of the hand x-ray on the film system versus the hand x-ray on the digital system. The film system had a really narrow exposure latitude. Anything over this, you're burning it out. Anything under this, you're, you're getting an underexposure. It looks like a shadow. So here's your exposure latitude. For a digital system, that exposure latitude is so wide that if I were to try to represent it, it would exit this building and hit the main campus building. That's how wide the exposure latitude is for digital. It's massive, right? As long as you're transmitting x-rays, the image receptor is picking up a signal and representing it as an image, right? So it's a very wide exposure latitude. Um, so that is the blessing, that we can get diagnostic information offer a wide range of exposures. And that the, the good news in that is that I know that your job is hard. I know that sometimes positioning patients is difficult. I know that some people, it's hard. What do I use technique-wise to, to image this 500-pound woman who's, you know, bed-bound, you know, on some kind of gravity bed or something? How do I, how do I image this thing? What I'm telling you is you've got a lot if you understand how the system works, you've got a lot of power at your disposal to get that picture, right? So use it to your advantage. All right. Now, last thing I'll kind of say is, if you are interested at all in photography, um, and maybe you're not, now's a good time to think about photography because what we're talking about is how exposed is the image. And a lot of that same stuff translates to photography. So in photography, we're using light to make the exposure. And we can decrease the amount of light or increase the amount of light by setting different stop values on the, on the camera, right? So you can see on this camera, in a way, it represents the light as like the mass. If I don't have enough mass, I get something I can't see. If I have too much mass, I can see too much, right? So just a similar, it's a similar exposure value. And a lot of these concepts are borrowed from photography.